Tom Clark's main event is a Boink Studios production. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Boink Studios. And check us out on boinkstudios.com where you can see all of our projects, past, present, and future. And now, on with the show. This is Daddy's show. Step off. <laughs> Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome back to the program, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and this is Tom Clark's Main Event. We're back once again here on Facebook Live. Glad you are with us. We're also recording today. The show will post on YouTube, as well as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. Subscribe and download today, and please follow the Tom Clark's Main Event podcast page for more content, Plus, check out our Patreon page for even more cool stuff. This is episode number 175. And yes, we're moving right along here on Facebook Live. I want to thank everyone for joining us here, of course, and for coming back each and every week. Much thanks to Heidi Ryan and the whole crew at Wrestling Rumors for giving us this platform. We do greatly appreciate it. So episode number 174 was the Revival and WrestleMania review. We talked about the recently departed tag team who left WWE and are on to... Bigger and better things, probably AEW, more than likely. We then covered the show of shows, which took place before an empty arena, of course. And guess what happened after that, folks? We took a two-week break, a hiatus, a standstill, a little mini vacation, if you will. But now we're on to a new episode on a new week with a brand new idea, a new concept. This time, the main event is the GOAT. That's right, the GOAT, and if you follow sports at all, especially pro wrestling, you know what the GOAT means. The GOAT stands for greatest of all time. That's what we're talking about here today. Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks, everybody, for watching. As always, we are sorry that we've been gone for two weeks, but yours truly needed a break, my friends. And uh, Wes, the 70-year-old uh, fan of Virginia. Wes, what's up, brother? Wes, I don't know if I ever told you this, but my father's name was Wesley, and my son's name is Wesley as well. Be safe out there in Virginia, my friend. Stay home. I'm sure you are. Um, how's everybody doing out there today? We're seeing our regulars. Um, Jonathan in the UK, thank you so much uh, for watching, my friend. Thank you much for watching. Victor, what's up? Corey, what's going on? Carlos, Brad, Sandy in Germany, Bobby, Shane, uh, Russell, what's going on? What's going on? So, uh, yes, it's been uh, it's been two weeks now. I'm doing okay, man. Thanks for asking. For those of you who are just listening to the show, and if you're not watching the show live on the Facebook, you're missing out because we have some pretty good fun here. Uh, we don't we don't get to do this every week. We we did have a great track record going. We did broadcast live every week, but dude. Things happen. Sometimes a man needs a break. Sometimes life gets in the way. You have other things going on, which is what's been happening to yours truly. But I'm back this week. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, still some things going on, but uh, uh, you know, all things considered, everything's okay. My family and I are healthy. We're well. We're safe. Uh, thank you very much to all of you out there. We hope that all of you are healthy, well, and safe as well. So yes, uh, everything is uh, is going pretty good here. Miss Lopez, how are you, my dear? Thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, so I thought I would do something a little bit differently. The whole basis of this show, uh, and this year we're seven years strong here, folks, on the main event. Um, the the whole basis of calling this thing the main event was I didn't want to do a, a regular pro wrestling podcast where we talked about the news of the day. Here's the deal, though. Since we started going live on Facebook, that's just kind of what we've done. But the problem I have now with the quarantine thing the suspension of live events from most companies except AEW and WWE, and I guess Impact as well. Um, uh, here's the deal, though. There's not a lot of, there's not a ton of brand new stuff to talk about. Honestly, we just be kind of hunting and trying to find things and dig up headlines, and it's it's not much fun to be a writer right now. It's even less fun to be a podcaster unless you're talking about something cool. So I'm switching it up, as I said before. This thing started as a main event podcast where I would pick one topic and that's what I podcasted about. Well, we're going to get back to our roots here today and we hope you're on board and we hope that you're ready for it and hope that you enjoy this um, because that is what we're going to do here today, folks. This is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. 
And to everybody watching this show today, for all of our regulars, thank you so much for hanging out as always. Thank you for coming back. Hopefully we'll build an audience here shortly. We haven't been here in two weeks, folks. Uh, so there you go. But to everybody watching, to everybody who's going to tune in, and we'll keep announcing this as we go on, I want to hear from you. I want to know who you believe is the greatest of all time. And as you pitch names to me, we're going to discuss it. If you repeat yourselves, if you guys have the same choices, the same options, it's all good to me. Uh, we can get into it. Uh, there's nothing I love more than a great spirited debate. As long as we are professional about it and we're adults and civilized, it'd be nice if no one would take the low road here, if you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. Uh, what what do you guys think... Uh, 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 and again, we're going with the topic of the day, man. This is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Who do you guys believe is the greatest of all time? Now, we can talk about uh, men, the men's wrestlers, the women's wrestlers, the tag teams, cruiserweights, uh, super heavyweights. We can do everything in between if you want, whatever you think. Maybe the greatest promotion, whatever. This is the greatest of all time. This could be an encompassing topic covering um, a lot of different things, covering all our bases. So, uh, what are you guys' input on this? What are you thinking about who do you believe is the greatest of all time? Aaron has, uh, has thrown in there is uh, Ric Flair. I am repping the Nate today with my shirt, as you guys can see. Uh, someone just, Marcus just said the Ultimate Warrior. Marcus, are you for real right now? Is that your choice? Is that your choice? Ric Flair. Uh, Corey says Bruno. I assume you meant Bruno. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. Stone. Russell says The Rock. Uh, Joe says, Bret Hart. Joe, thank you for that opinion, man. See, I love this because we get very uh, different differing opinions, so to speak. Um, I love the idea um, uh, of, of having uh, uh, all these different guys. Sandy says, CM Punk. What's up, Elvis Martinez? Thank you so much for hanging out, brother. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Liz Lopez says, Bret Hart. Brad Hall says that's easy. Luthez, oh, dude, Brad, Brad with the Luthez reference. Well done, my friend. Old school all the way. I'm loving that. Elvis says I'm the goat. Stop it. Shut your mouth. Thank you, man. Uh, John says Ric Flair is the goat. Okay, so as you guys are continuing to throw names to me, uh, what's up, Will? Thanks for hanging out, brother. Um, so if you guys are just tuning in, today we're doing something a little bit different. We'll get back to the roots of the show. The main event this time is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. So that's what we're talking about here today. Your choice for the greatest of all time. Um, in, in my belief, my, my belief is that it's Ric Flair. That's my position. Jamie says Roddy Piper has to be in the top. I'll go for that. Well, the question is, who is the greatest of all time? Whether it's wrestler, uh, tag team, promotion, company, whatever. Miss Lopez, never letting me down. Thank you, my dear, for that. Dusty freaking Rose, the American dream. I got Dusty repped on the wall behind me with the shirt. So uh, I believe he's still up there on the wall. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I love Dust. Dust is, um, Dusty is, and I've told this story before. I lost my father at a very young age. It was six days before my fifth birthday. Uh, it's something that I still carry with me to this day as a man, and I probably will always carry with me. A um, lot, of, lot of stuff there to uh, kind of dig through. I do the best I can with it. But growing up, uh, my dad was a huge wrestling fan. That's how he and I bonded what, from the age of, I don't know, one up until the age four and a half when he was gone. Um, but my dad was a big guy. Dusty was a big guy. So when my dad passed, I just automatically latched on to Dusty and looked at him as a father figure. I never got to tell him that. I never got to meet the dream. It's, it sucks. I'd love to meet Cody one day to tell him uh, what his dad meant to me. And I can't imagine how many times that dude's heard that through the years. But I'd love to be able to just have the opportunity just to tell him straight up, hey, man, your dad meant the world to me. He was kind of my dad, too. Which, again, I'm sure is something that he's heard many, many times in the past. Uh, we're getting some other uh, uh, people talking here. Let's see. Uh, Tag Team Road Warriors. I'll go with that. WCW Sting, John says. Paul Heyman, Grace Manager. Okay, I'll go with that. Yep. Dusty is a great, fantastic choice. Um, Sandy mentioned Edge. Interesting. Interesting choice. I like Edge a lot. Uh, nobody on the current roster. I'll give you that for sure. <laughs> WWF Taker, yeah. Okay, so if you want to go by greatest of all time per company, I mean, we could do that, I guess. Sandy says, Sandy, you got a lot of choices. Elvis says, Eddie. Uh, nice. Uh, Sandy says, Tommaso Ciampa. You're talking about, I guess you mean current, right? Uh, hands down, no comparison. Ric Flair, Shawn Michaels. What's up, Gary? Yeah, man. I, yeah, I'm glad someone finally said Heartbreak Kid. No one said HBK yet. That's crazy. 
Uh, let's see. 1A Sting, 1A, 1B Undertaker. Interesting. Macho Man Randy Savage. Shane, what's up, brother? Shane says, Jerry the King Lawler. He has won more titles than anybody in his rest of all. Well, Shane, you make a compelling argument, dude. I can't really... Uh, I can't really fight you. And here's the deal. People, all right, Shane, and you know this, brother. You're old school like I am, yes? Um, people fight that that choice, and they'll fight you on this because they'll say, Lawler never went anywhere. Lawler didn't have to go anywhere, folks. You know how much money the king made in Memphis? You have any idea how much that territory was booming back in the day? Listen, he made more money by staying home. Saved all the... Now, he did travel the world. Obviously, he did. But the airfare that he saved by not being on the road 300 days out of the year, you know what I'm saying? Uh, dude, uh, wear and tear on his body. I mean, yeah, he's still putting through himself through it in the ring. But look at the guy right now. He looks like he's in fantastic shape, man. You know what I mean? And made a ton of money. I was about to say that. And, and that's a ton of money. I didn't want to curse. <laughs> but it's true, man. Made a ton of money back in the day. Memphis was booming. Memphis was as big as anything on the planet in terms of pro wrestling. I love that territory, dude. Wacky, you know, a little crazy at times. But, uh, yeah, man, made a ton. And and Lawler's one of the best of all time. I love that choice. I love that. Will says, that's tough. Singles, Ric Flair tag team the Dudleys. Ooh, interesting choice. Women's, how can you not say Charlotte based on in-ring talent? Well, I can I not say Charlotte based on in-ring talent. And I like Charlotte a lot. But Charlotte wouldn't be my personal pick for greatest of all time in the women's division. Um... Hmm, that's a good one. Somebody that could work everybody, that can make anybody look good. I mean, I think Trish is a is a great candidate for that. But I mean, if you talk about women's wrestling, you might have to go way, way back too. You know what I mean? Was she meant for the company? Was she meant for the promotion she worked for? Was she meant for the sport? Robert says, uh, Flair for life. I'm with you, brother. Totally. Marcus says, The Rock. Sandy continue to throw stuff. Bobby the Brain. I have talked about Bobby the Brain before, and I never, uh, I never meant any disrespect by this, and I don't mean any disrespect now. It wasn't until I was an adult that I appreciated what Bobby brought to the table. And Bobby was spectacular. All you got to do is look at the guy, just look at his body of work, and forget the stuff he did as a manager. If if all he ever did was the stuff as a wrestler, then he would have been tremendous, folks. Uh, but the stuff he did as managers, and then or as first as a wrestler, then as a manager. It's fantastic. It's incomparable. You can't really compare it to anybody or anything else. The guy was one of a kind, for sure. But as a kid, I didn't see that. I didn't grow up as a WWE fan. You guys know that, right? I didn't grow up as a WWE fan, man. I was an NWA kid. I was Jim Crockett for life. Still am, right? So I didn't grow up watching uh, The Brain. Uh, I didn't appreciate that dude till years later. When I was growing up, you know what I saw? Bobby the Brain sitting beside Gorilla Monsoon cracking jokes. Can I be honest with you? And this is just me talking. I didn't do comedy wrestling. I didn't even know what that was. I, I saw two comedians. Well, I saw a straight man and a comedian cracking jokes. I'm like, what am I looking at? This is not pro wrestling. You got to remember, man, I was raised on the Horseman. I was raised on Dusty and Tully. I was raised on Magnum and Tully in the cage with the blood and the I quit match. I was raised on Chief Wahoo McDaniel. I was raised on the Horsemen. I was raised on the Rock and Rolls and the Midnights. And I was raised on the Fantastics and uh, the Sheep Herders. I was raised on those guys. That's who I was born and bred with was Jim Crockett Promotions. When I saw a comedian sitting there who I presumed, presumed to be a comedian, Bobby Heenan, I knew nothing about, about Minnesota wrestling. I knew nothing about the AWA at the time. I didn't know, discover them until later as well. It was all comedy. It was a circus. Vince McMahon was a ringleader in a top hat. He was P.T. Barnum. He still is P.T. Barnum, folks. He really is. But that, that's who I believed he was, and that's what I thought that uh, WBF was, was just comedy wrestling. Still is in some ways, if I'm being honest. But uh, that's why I didn't appreciate him. I now have a very deep respect for Bobby the Brain Heenan, for sure. Robert says, I agree to me, Dusty was the epitome of a true wrestler because he wasn't all flash, because he stood for the blue-collar guys and the nickname the American Dream. Well, he was the sizzle and the steak, brother, wasn't he? John says, for TNA, it's AJ Styles. Hard to, hard to argue that. Hard to argue that. Flair and NWA, Hogan and WWE, Midnight Express. No, so Noah, let me. And I, I'm sorry, I'm behind in comments. I'm trying to catch up here, folks. Uh, Noah, you said Hogan and WWE. Do you base that on what he did as a total package? Not to Lex Luger. You're welcome. But uh, total package as a performer, or do you base that on his in-ring work? Because I would say 98 percent of the people out there would say his in-ring work was garbage. I'm not hating on the guy. I'm just saying, again, you can't compare that to what Flair did, right? So I'm, I'm guessing you assume the total package as a performer, right? So Lopez says, uh, Lita, West with the kind of a controversial pick in the Fabulous Moolah. 
Uh, Corey Elam says, if you are talking new school is the goat, hands down, Lance Archer. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, hey, man, it's all up to your opinion, brother. Whatever you guys think, man. Mark Calloway with all his personas. Well, the one persona that counts is, uh, you know, the dead man. Corey says the rock and rolls. Um, I didn't go early, Wilf. Why does everyone always think I go early? I went live at 12 o'clock on the dot, brother. Yes, sir, Wes. Jim Crockett all the way. JCP. Greatest NBA Tag Team Midnight Express. Aaron, I, I love that. Hard to be far for me to argue that. I would still say the, the Road Warriors because Road Warriors drew the most money. But at the same time, you can't argue with what Ricky and Robert did back in the day. The pops those two guys got, unbelievable. But the Midnights were freaking awesome. You could you could argue that one team made the other in that territory for sure. Uh, I love the Freebirds, man. Tim, are you shut up, Tim? I love the Freebirds. You kidding me? The fabulous Freebirds. Um, uh, you know Terry Gordy, Terry Bam Bam Gordy, Michael P. S. Hayes, and uh, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. Hayes, Gordy, uh, Buddy Jack Roberts. There it is. Uh, I love that trio. They they were the best as a trio. I love uh, gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. He's one of my guys for sure. Jimmy Garvin for life, man. But at the same time, I I think it was an interesting pairing with Hayes. I think on paper it sounded really good, and then you saw him, and you're like, yeah, okay, they got robes and stuff. That's kind of how it felt to me. And Garvin rocking the stars and bars. I just don't know how I feel about that. You know what I mean? Gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. He was always a loner as a heel. Eh, I don't know. Um, but still, much love for Jimmy, for sure. Jamie, I, yeah, I've looked up a lot of stuff from Heenan over the years, for sure. Lita was an awesome competitor with Trish. Oh, of course, yeah. Miss Lopez. God, Miss Lopez, you're killing it today. You, my dear, on point. Shut up. Sherry Martin, Martel, excuse me. Sensational Sherry. Greatest female performer of all time? If you take into account her body of work in the ring and as a manager and combine it all up, I'll go for that. I'll buy that. I, I, it's, I can't really argue that. Manager Noah says, Jim Cornette and Jimmy Hart. A tie? I can I can go for that too. Yeah. What's up, Christopher? Shane. Oh, my God. Shane's bringing the Mount Rushmore stuff in. Are you ready for this, folks? Mount Rushmore tag teams. Road Warriors, Fabulous Ones, the Steiners, Arn Ole Anderson. Wow, that's some great picks, man. That's some great picks, brother. Mount Rushmore tag teams. All right, for me, it would be the Rock and Rolls. It would be the Midnights. Either version of the Midnights. Um, uh, Rock and Rolls, Midnights, uh, Road Warriors. Mm. And I'll say Anderson and Blanchard. That's my Mount Rushmore tag teams, for sure. AWA, Nick Bockwinkle. God, I love Nick Bockwinkle. I always said that Nick Bockwinkle was like... Uh, uh, Ric Flair, except highly, highly, highly educated, and that's not a slam on Nate. Don't get me wrong there, but I mean, if if Ric Flair went to Harvard, he would be Nick Bockwinkle. Do you know what I'm saying? If Ric Flair went to Harvard and didn't have the Horseman, he'd be Nick Bockwinkle. That's kind of how I viewed it. Love Nick. Are you kidding? Awesome. Raphael says, "When Sam Punk come back, brother, if I knew, I'd tell you." Flair singles Road Warriors tag team. Yep. WCCW Carry Von Eric John. Great freaking opinion. I. In my, can I be honest with you? In my opinion, I think David Von Erich was the best of the bunch in terms of the brothers. He was by far the better worker, in my opinion. Um, I enjoyed Carrie. I enjoyed Kevin a lot. I really did love Kevin. But uh, um, for me, it would be it would be Mike. Folks, if you're just now tuning in, this is the main event. Hi, I'm Tom. And uh, this time, the main event is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And we're just sort of throwing out our suggestions for the greatest of all time in terms of the top superstar, to borrow a WB term, uh, top pro wrestler, uh, top tag team, top promotion, top uh, female wrestler, whatever you want to say. Um, so there you go. And we're just kind of throwing stuff out there, out the wall to see what sticks, and we're talking about it. Uh, just as Flair's ending work is hard to beat, Hogan not even close. I'm going to agree with that. No, okay, thank you, brother. Not in ring, but may that be mainstream. Yeah, well, he along with Vince. I'll, I'll buy that. Danny was stone cold. Uh, I would say anyone that grew up in, during the Attitude Era would have to say that they believe Stone Cold or The Rock is the greatest of all time. Or Shawn Michaels, right? Um, don't have to say. You know, people are partial to the to the year they grew up in. They're partial to the era they grew up in. It doesn't mean they can't change their tune or evolve with time or evolve their opinion or change their opinion over time, yes? But, you know, let's be honest, folks. Um, 
they, they you are partial to the area you grew up in. I grew up in the territory area of JCP, and to me, that's the best wrestling on earth, and it still is. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that I'm partial to that. Do you know what I'm saying? So, what about the missing link? Interesting choice, my friend. I'll take Dark Journey with the missing link as a package. Sandy says Jeff Hardy. I mean, there's probably some people that consider Jeff to be the greatest of all time. Maybe not like, but as a total performer. Hey, man, everyone's got their own view, got their own opinion, for sure. Robert Ray says, love what Dusty did for the NWA all around, booking wrestling and on the stick. I agree with you completely, my friend. He's my guy, for sure. Kurt Angle. Aaron, thank you, brother, with uh, Kurt Angle as a choice. That's the first guy to mention Angle. Very well done, my friend. Let's see. Sal says Archer versus Dustin was good. Yes, sir, it was. No doubt. Sandy, see you, brother. Who are your Mount Rushmore of women's wrestlers, Ryan says? Ryan, you're the man, dude. Okay, wow, jeez. I mean, I would have to say Sherry Martell. Thank you, Miss Lopez. Sherry Martell is on there. Um, Trish and Lita, I would say, would have to be on there. I mean, honestly, I mean, I believe they are. Um, mm. God, I don't know. That fourth spot's hard for me. For me, it's hard. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know, man. I would say Mae Young. And don't laugh at that. I'm not talking about the comedic Mae Young. I'm talking about the tough as nails Mae Young, who was tough as any man could ever hope to be in her prime and who brought that edge to her game and brought that edge to women's wrestling. Um, and the fact that she was willing to do anything. She took any bump known to man in her in her 70s, 80s. And how, how old did she live to be? Jeez Louise. I, I don't know, man. I think I put Mae Young up there. I'm being honest with you. That's how I feel. Brad says China. Well, there you go. Joe, was, uh, did Joe someone mentioned the Heart Foundation. Uh, I enjoyed uh, uh, Brett and Jim. I did. There again, I, you know, I was aware of them as a kid, but I can't say I was a Heart Foundation fan because I was more uh, uh, NWA fan. But I did appreciate them as, as the years went on, for sure. The internet had a statement that Vince is selling WWE. It's news to me. I have not seen any of those headlines this morning. So it's news to me. Aaron says in World Class Championship Wrestling, the gentleman Chris Adams. I love Chris Adams, man. Uh, Robbie says Matt Rushmore, Tag Teams, Road Warriors, Rock and Rolls, the Steiners, the Dudleys. Well, it's good choices, man. Sal says Shawn Michaels has got our second vote for HBK. Grace and Lashane, you're bringing it to us my, today, my friend. Grace announcer of all time is Lance Russell. I honestly, I love Jim Ross, I do, but it's hard to argue against Lance. But I, I'm a Gordon Soley guy at my heart, at my core. I'm a Gordon Soley guy. I just am. Uh, but I love Jim and I love uh, Lance Russell. I think that's the trifecta right there. And I'll be honest with you, I love Shivani. I grew up listening to Shivani as well. Bob Cottle. Bob Cottle doesn't get enough respect, my friends. Bob Cottle does not get enough respect in this game, okay? And he freaking well should. I love me some Bob Cottle. Great announcer, good man, too. What's up, Brandon, West Virginia? What's going on? Corey says Triple H. Corey, you were the first person to say Triple H. Crazy, man. You're the first one to say Triple H in this whole deal, man. So, yeah, I was waiting on somebody to say it, honestly, but you uh, you threw it out there. Uh, how about Bruiser Brody, James says. Okay, um, in terms of drawing money, in terms of what he got paid, holy God, Bruiser was a legend in Japan. Good person, too. Good guy, right? Good down-to-earth, uh, sentimental guy. Good father, good husband, right? Everyone loved Bruiser. But buddy inside the ring, you better watch out, brother. He's coming for you, you know what I mean? Drew a ton of money in Japan, dude. I'm not saying I'm agreeing with your choice 100%, but I can see where you're coming from. Uh, Will says, uh, give Jeff Hardy a vote as the best high flyer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could say Amazing Red has been has been doing f spectacular things. The, the the best high flyer is a big one for me because that's still... I mean, the, the game is still evolving as we go on through the years. Uh, but, you know, I think things like best high flyer, best women, best woman, whatever, those things can still evolve. When you talk about greatest of all time in terms of a men's singles wrestler... I mean, do we have, and people have been saying there's no one today, there's no one today. I saw that in the comments several times of the feed here. 
Um, that's the issue with the best men's wrestler of all time. I don't know if there's a lot of people you can really even claim that's even on their way to that right now at this point. And maybe there are that I'm not thinking of. You know what I mean? But um, best of all time, I got one for you. And you guys know he's a favorite of mine, Okada. If you want to talk about modern generation, best of all time, Kazusuke Okada. Um I would say he's got to be the best of all time in this era. And I know AJ Styles is right there, and I get that. And I've got a lot of AJ fans watching the show. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't know Okada, go watch some Okada. Because I'm going to tell you right now, guys like AJ, guys in the business who you respect and love and believe are fantastic, they will tell you Okada is the best in the business. I'm not making any of that up, man. It's the truth. Uh, let's see. Miss Lopez says Ted to be Aussie. Ted was uh, Ted was a king in the territories, man. Uh, great talent, great worker. Made his name in Mid South. Came up in Texas, right? I think. Um, yeah, and got his way to WWE. The Me and Dollar Man gimmick. I didn't much care for that. Can I be honest with you? I thought it was a cheap Rick, uh, version of Ric Flair, cheap version of the Nature Boy. Which I don't think he needed to do that, but instead of BF, they're gonna they're gonna give you some hokey gimmick and they're gonna tell you to get it over. And he got it over. I'm not gonna say he didn't. I just never cared for it. I like the guy a lot. I can't say I love the gimmick for sure. Ryan says he used to love Demolition growing up. Demolition rip off the Road Warriors, and they'll tell you they weren't. Bill Eady and Barry Darso both tell you they weren't a rip off. We all know they're a rip off. That's not to to discount anything they did though, dude. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed Demolition for what they were. You got It's like listening to a cover song. It's like going to see a Led Zeppelin cover band. Okay, you know it's not Zeppelin. You know it's not Plant and Page on stage. It's not Bonham. It's not John Paul Jones. You get that? They got wigs and stuff to make you think that they're them. Yeah. But uh, the fact is, they're not them. But you can appreciate it for what it is. You know what I mean? You say, "Hey, I, I saw a pretty good cover band." Uh, so that's how I appreciated Demolition for what they were. They were a cover band. It's my take. John says, I'm at May and Moolah separately at CVS the day Raw was at the Township Auditorium in uh, Cola, South Carolina. So, awesome, dude. What a great freaking story, man. I love that. Will says, Bret Hart. Yeah, we've had a few uh, things from Bret Jamel. Jamel is late. And I'm late getting to your comment. My apologies. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, bu- bu- bu. Yeah, the, the thing about WB getting sold. Wow, we'll see what happens, man. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but I, if I see anything, I'll let you know. Again, folks, if you're just joining us today, uh, if you're just now clicking on to the show, uh, this is Tom Clark's main event, and we are talking about the greatest of all time. This could be wrestler, female wrestler, uh, cruiserweight, high flyer, super heavyweight, manager, announcer, referee. We haven't talked about referees, tag team, company, whatever you got for me, man. Just throw it to me. We're just a big conversation today. Lucia says there's a legit case for Chris Jericho. I'll buy that. I'll buy that. Modern day, sure. If we're t- yeah, sure. I think Jericho. If you talk about the best of all time that's going right now, now some of Jericho's matches get get slammed right now, but it is what it is. But uh, Kazushiko Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, AJ Styles, Chris Jericho. Yeah, I'm not hating that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not hating that at all. Especially for being. Uh, 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 for being a, a total package, right? Let's see. Hello, Dave. What's going on, brother? Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, Marcus says, Trish Stratus. Yes, sir, I agree with that. Corey says, The Great Muda. I love Muda. Oh, my God. See, you know why I like, I like topics like this? It gets me thinking, gets the wheels turning. Great Muda was fantastic. Muda did things in this country no one had ever seen before. Just much in the same way that Eddie uh, and uh, uh, Eddie and uh, Benoit and Ray did stuff that people hadn't seen in this country before, Muda did it first. You know what I mean? I remember being a kid looking at Great Muda going, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. They had to turn, they didn't have to turn him baby face, but the crowd popped for him, dude. Like at some point, they were just cheering him so much. They're like, well, screw it, he's face now. But God, he was tremendous. Legend, he's a legend. Joe, you're talking about promoters now? Well, Eric Bischoff, you're talking about announcers. I wouldn't classify Eric Bischoff as a great announcer. As a booker, as the guy in charge, eh, he was for a brief time, right? And then it fizzled out. I don't know if you could call him the greatest of all time. In my opinion, I wouldn't call him the greatest of all time because of the length of his run was like 10 minutes. But that's just my take. 
Robert says Mount Rushmore managers. Gary Hart, Jimmy Hart, Paul Ellering, Bobby Heenan. That's a good one. That's a great that's a great Mount Rushmore. Uh okay, since so, all right, so how about this? How about um Jim Cornette, because I had to put him up there. Um Paul Heyman, I had to put him up there. Um Paul Ellering, I'll put him up there. Uh I'm gonna say JJ Dillon. With a with a close Bobby Heenan. Yeah. I have to put Bobby Heenan on there. I'll just make it five. I'm chiseling a new face out of the work, out of the rock, man. <laughs> Not out of the rock, out of the rock. You know what I mean? All right. Best gimmick. Oh, Aaron's gonna go greatest of all time in terms of gimmicks. I like that. I'll go with that. Undertaker. Some people would say he's the greatest of all time. Period. Right? Greatest gimmick of all time. Undertaker. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dusty Rhodes. Funny how the greatest gimmick of all time often ties in with your vote, with your choice for the greatest wrestler of all time or greatest star of all time. Right? Funny how that happens. Ricky Steamboat. Finally, someone mentioned the dragon. Very nice. Very nice. Love the dragon. Ricky, you can't discount anything Ricky ever did in the ring. I don't think I ever saw a bad Ricky Steamboat match. Does a bad Ricky Steamboat match exist? If it does, I haven't seen it. Please don't go show me. Don't go dig up a bad Ricky Steamboat match. You'll break my heart on this Friday. Please don't do it. <laughs> James is hitting us with another one. Abdul the Butcher. Uh, greatest uh, hardcore act of all time? How about that? The greatest hardcore act of all time. Abdul the Butcher. What's your Mount Rushmore? Here we go. Greatest hardcore act of all time. Uh, I would say uh, Mick Foley. I would say Abdul the Butcher. I would say um, Terry Funk. And uh, who would you put as number four? Whew. Dreamer, maybe. Sabu, maybe. It's a hard one. Yep. Sabu, there you go. Jericho, WCW, WWE, and now AEW. Yeah, for sure. And again, folks, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to catch up to everyone's quotes or everyone's uh, comments. Hello, Andy. Doing great, my friend. Another vote for Taker, I see. Randy Savage. Great. A vote for for Savage. First one. There you go. Great promoter back in the day was Pete Apostolou. Great guy. Wes, I don't know him. Who was he a promoter for? Holy crap. I mean, you listen, if you're going to put greatest promoters of all time, you had to say Vince is there, right? Um uh, let's let's talk about this in five years. Let's see if Tony Khan's on the Mount Rushmore in five years. If AW is booming in five years, you might be putting Tony Khan up there, dude. I'm not lying. Um, Jim Crockett for a time was a great great freaking promoter. Um, that one's a little bit harder for me to be honest with you. It's a little bit harder if I'm being honest. Paul Heyman for a time was the best. James with Bam Bam Bigelow, interesting. Shane says Grace Hill in Memphis was Eddie Gilbert. Hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. I agree with that. Jamel says, Dean Malenko. Interesting. Man, we're getting some great conversation pieces here. Miss Lopez says, Captain Lou Albano. You're killing it. You are. I wasn't a fan. Again, he was cartoon. It was all cartoon wrestling. Uh, I respect him. Don't misunderstand me. I just didn't care for the gimmick. I didn't care for the image. I didn't care for any of the rubber bands in the beard. What was that? You know what I mean? But I get your point. I'm not going to argue your point for sure. Uh, Paul Bear. Can't forget Paul Bear. And we totally did. At least I did. Uh, Mr. Fuji, good one. That's a good one. He didn't do much, but yeah. Uh, RJ, Uncle Tom Man, greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time. <laughs> Let's look at the honkometer. That was my favorite thing ever that Santino ever did was the honkometer. Miss Lopez with Terry Funk, yes, ma'am. What about the biggest uh, letdowns in wrestling history? Ryan says, oh, Tom, Ryan, that's a good one, man. Dang, go on. If you're going to get specific on me, we could be here for hours, days, weeks, maybe. Uh, biggest letdown of all time. Hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin's heel turn was d ridiculous. Uh, uh, Kevin Nash's defeat of Goldberg was absolutely ridiculous and should never have happened. Uh, those were both tragic letdowns. Never should have took place. Um, hmm. What else? It doesn't have to be something big. Maybe something big for me, right? Uh, the Road Warriors heel turn. I didn't get that either. I didn't understand that. The fans are still cheering for him. They were booing Dusty. How did that happen, folks? Don't turn him heel. It's dumb. That was ridiculous. Um, uh, that's a good one, though, man. I applaud that. That was good. Absolutely. Andre the Giant, Corey says. Holy cow! Be best attraction of all time. Hmm, that's a good one. 
I don't know, man. That's a tough one. We got some. If we get any old timers up in here, they'll be throwing some other uh, ideas and names at us. Jim Londis. Gee, no one can discount Jim Londis. Go look the guy up, man. He was fantastic, fascinating guy. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. I love this. Isn't this fun? Tell me you're not having fun. You're lying. <laughs> you're lying, all of you. Don't be dishonest. Uh, let's see. Greatest uh, ring music of all time. Oh, my God. Now you guys are going to get even more uh, uh, complex on the greatest ring music of all time. Undertaker. I'll say Stone Cold. Because the minute you hear the glass break, you know who it is. There's no denying that. Rock's same way if you smell, right? Mm. Mick Foley with the car crash, maybe. Um, I still love the brood. Gangrel and the brood. It's good stuff. Um, I don't know. Black Sabbath, Iron Man for the Lo uh, Legion of Doom, Road Warriors. I'll, I'll go with that. ELO with Rock and Roll is King for the Rock and Roll Express. Great entrance music, man. Great entrance themes, I should say. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic. Demolition had a good uh, uh, entrance. There you go. Demolition had a good uh, entrance music also. And was uh, Rick Derringer did uh, Demolition's music. Jerry Jarrett was the greatest promoter. Shane, it's hard to argue that. Hard to argue that, maybe. That's a good one. That's a really good one, Shane. Thank you for that. Uh, oh, I see. Wes says Pete promoted for Crocker Promotions in Virginia. Well done, sir. Thank you. Oh, so someone just hit me with entrance. Oh, my God. You guys are scrambling my brains. This is good stuff. Best entrance of all time. I'll say Undertaker. Uh, Bray's good. Bray's really good. But I'll say Taker. Uh, I'll say Taker first. For sure. Piper, Bret Hart. Ronnie Garvin, Ray says. Interesting. Jeff Jarrett. Uh, in terms of best wrestler of all time? Eh, I don't know. I'm not really high on Jeff, I'm being honest with you. Mr. Perfect. Joe, well done, dude. Kerr Hennig is uh, best. Uh, yeah, I love Perfect. Coco Beware, says Reggie. Coco, back in the territory days, was a really, really good hand. Let's don't discount how good Coco was. They give him WWF. They put a bunch of bright colors on him, and they give him a bird and stuff. Here's the bird, man. Hey, Coco, I see you with a bird. Brother, you're going to love it. Pal. Here's your bird, pal. I think it's how it went. The Vince impression now. If you don't have Vince impression, you're doing it wrong. Here you go, pal. Here's this bird. <laughs> it's the truth, man. Let's see. Glacier and WCW was the biggest flop. Biggest flop. Oh, God. You're going to hit me with that. Miss Lopez says Chris Benoit was the biggest letdown. Whew, in more ways than one. God, that's, that's heavy, Miss Lopez. That's freaking heavy, what you just said. It's very, very heavy. Yeah. That's uh, that's literal, literal, right? Crazy. That's a red hot topic too. Goldberg besting Bray. You think that's a? I don't know. Of all time? I mean, if it is to you, it is. It's cool. Didn't forget Andre, brother. Somebody mentioned uh, Andre a little while ago. The goon biggest letdown. It's funny. Shopmaster shouldn't have never been. Oh, I'll give you that. Ray Dean was slick. Ray, you're killing it, man. I love slick, dude. Yeah, I like slick. What about downtown Bruno? They didn't call Downtown Bruno Downtown Bruno in WBF. What'd they call him? Harvey Whippleman. Terrible. Terrible name. <laughs> Leave it to Vince. Listen here, pal. I got this name for you. You're going to love it. NWO Black and Gray. WCW Run. Black and White. Braff. Braff. Braffmatic. I like that. Best managers Heenan, Cornette, Hart, Heyman. I'll, I'll take that. If you're looking for a letdowns in one word, Shockmaster. Beefcake! Beefcake! Brutus the Barber Beefcake, I assume. He and Greg Valentine were a good tag team. Don't know if I'd say the greatest of all time. Shockmaster and Robocop. I'll take that for sure. Hulk Hogan being Andre was horrible. Victor! Wow! There's a hot take for you. Um, so, Victor, do you believe that Hogan beating Andre was not a way to pass the torch and to move the business forward for that company? And move the business forward as a whole? You don't believe that? I'm just asking a question, man. Strike Force! Strike Force was Tito Santana and Rick Martel, right? Good tag team. HBK, best music. Oh, oh, Sean. I love that music, actually. It's terrible, but it's good. It's so terrible, it's good. What about Classy Freddy Blassie? Ryan, thank you, bro. I didn't even think about that, man. I wasn't a huge fan. I liked him. The Pencil Neck Geek thing was got old. After like two minutes of it, I'm done with it. There again, I didn't grow up a WWF fan, dude. You know what I mean? So, 
I, I respect those guys and appreciate them later when I got educated and educated myself on who they were and what they did. I liked him. I didn't love him, if I'm being honest. Ms. Lopez says Undertaker. Absolutely. Grace Music was Bad Street. God, Shane. Shane, you, my friend, once again have won the no prize. Check your mailbox, friend. It's on the way. Bad Street, Atlanta, GA. Pal. It's good stuff. That's great stuff. Michael Hayes seen his own. Man, can I tell you something? When I was a kid and that they put the video on uh, NWA, I think, and I saw that and I was like mesmerized. I had recorded with a cassette tape recorder off the TV and I made sure to be real quiet and I hit record and recorded off the TV and it was the coolest thing I've heard in my life and I listened to it non-stop. I'm not even joking. I may listen to it after the show's over today. What a great throwback. Great throwback. Now, let's see. Best wrestlers, Flair, Hogan, Austin, and Rock. Yeah. Wrestlers, Hogan, eh. That's your, that's your thing, man. It's cool. We didn't forget Jimmy Hart, Corey. A lot of poor people were saying Jimmy Hart. Uh, Wes believes that Randy Orton's music is fantastic. There you go. Triple H, your music. Motorhead. Hard to argue with Motorhead, Linda. Any of the three songs that Motorhead did for him, hard to argue with any of them. For sure. Harlem Heat. Whoa, Ray. God, Ray. Dang, Ray. Ray's Ray of Sunshine on the show today. Get it? Uh, Harlem Heat. Booker T, Stevie Ray. That's a good one, man. For sure. Best finishing move of all time. Stole Cold Stunner. Oh. <gasps> You want to know why? Because you can get it on anybody, anytime, anywhere. You can get it on anybody. Smaller than you, bigger than you, three times your size, three times under your size. Uh, you can get it on uh, two people at once if you really wanted to. Um, uh, and you can it can come from out of nowhere. RKO, yeah, sure, it comes from out of nowhere. But you have to be in a certain position to hit that. I mean, Austin just has to spin you around and hit it. It's just my take. It's just my take. But to me, it's the best finisher of all time because you can hit it on anybody, anytime, anywhere. And it's very practical. Um, you know, mm, having said that, I'm a sucker for Dusty's bionic elbow, if I'm being honest, because I love it. Um, the Canadian Destroyer is fantastic to watch, over the, although it's been it's been used way, way too much through the years. It's it's overdone now. It's not even a finishing move at this point. Guys are kicking out. Of the Can- if you can kick out of the Canadian Destroyer, you should be thrown out of the locker room, straight up. So if you don't have plans of, of getting pinned by the Canadian Destroyer, don't let the Canadian Destroyer be done to you. A little pro tip today from Tom Clark's main event. JYD. Dude. I love me some Junkyard Dog, dude. For sure. Mighty Igor Roberts says was awesome. That's funny, dude. I like that. Boogeyman, Brenda says. Good Lord. Uh, Frost says, Ultimate Warrior, biggest D-bag. Well, you know. Yeah. Let's don't speak ill of the dead here, folks. The music for Ultimate Warrior, Brad says. Bastion Booger was a flop. Oh my God, more ways than one. Hello, Yvette. What's up? Thank you so much for watching today. Yvette, and to everyone tuning in right now, I will say it again. Uh, This is uh, Tom Clark's main event. Today we're talking about the GOAT, the greatest of all time. This could be wrestler, tag team, female wrestler, manager, uh, promotion, promoter, referee, whoever you got. That's what we've been doing since we went live today. It's been pretty freaking fun, man. Boogie Woogie Man, James, you're talking about Jimmy Valiant. One of the coolest, Ray says best finisher, HBK, Sweet Chin Music. Well, when it was still a finisher, Ray, remember the good old days of Sweet Chin Music being the finish? It's not anymore, is it? There again, it's, it's overused as the Canadian uh, flip uh, flip pile driver um, uh, destroyer, so there you go. Uh, I was fortunate enough to meet and hang out with Jimmy Valiant when we were in a promotion 20 some odd years ago. Great guy, loved the guy. He was very nice to me, very kind old fella. And uh, had great stories. Great dude. And uh, I love Jimmy to death. He won't remember me for nothing, to be honest with you. But, yeah, I love Boogie, man. Everyone called him Boogie, by the way. Brad says, Grace Fashions. Oh, my God. Are we doing a... Are we now going to do a Mount Rushmore Factions? I'm all in. Okay? I'm all in. So, I will go the Four Horsemen. I will go uh, uh, the New Day. I, sorry. It's how I feel. I'll go uh, the Four Horsemen. I'll go New Day. I'll go Evolution, and I'll go. Um, the, the the politically correct answer is NWO. Let's be honest, but it's not the the romantic answer because NWO 
uh, didn't really do anything. I mean, it made a ton of money, but then it overstayed its welcome and it went on way too long. And they brought it back from the dead way too many times. That thing should have been took out behind the barn and shot because it was way past its prime, um, in my humble opinion. So, I don't know. The fourth spot would be uh, would be hard. Uh, Brad says the free birds. I'll take that. And people look at me funny if I say New Day, but dude, they're still going. Think about that for a second. Crazy. They're still going and still popular. That's saying something, man. That'd be not letting Sting win at WrestleMania. Noah says, fantastic answer, Noah. Freaking awesome. I love you for that. It's great. RJ says, uh, no black and gray. Jeff Jarrett, Bret Hart, version terrible. Okay, yeah. Was that black and gray or black and silver? Why is that? Why am I wanting to say silver? Maybe I'm wrong. Straight gaining broke is the biggest letdown. Oh, well, Andy, great call. God bless it, dude. Great call. Freak, man. Brock taking the streak from Taker because at the end of the day, what good did it do, Brock? Here's what it did. A nothing. Nothing, okay? He didn't prosper from that. He didn't get over more. It didn't create the legend of Brock Lesnar. They were going to do that anyway, dude. I'll totally wear that. and I'll take that all day. Freaking great, great, great freaking point. Thank you for that. DDP and Jake the Snake, best heel of all time? Jake Snake Roberts or Ric Flair? Speaking of Boogie, I'm watching the first Starcade right now. He's in the ring gets great against the great Kabuki. Actually, it's Jimmy Valiant. It's Charlie Brown. He's a clown, that Charlie Brown. Uh, Wes, have a good one, my friend. Thank you for watching. Robert says, I'll throw a territory thing out there. Another great manager, Scandal Right Bar. Thank you, dude. Thank you for that. I love that, too. I love that bar. Best ring entrance music, <laughs> Disco Inferno. Oh, my God. RKO, best move of all time. Midnight Rockers, Marty and Sean. Oh, great, great callback, dude. British Bulldogs, someone has mentioned the Bulldogs, haven't they? Maybe not. James, you might have been the first one to mention the Bulldogs. Good call, my friend. Best finishers, original line tamer, figure four, backcracker, cover clutch, heart punch. Great choices, man, great choices. Best submission move of all time, mandible claw. And here's why. Mandible claw is a legit submission move. Um, I love the figure four. I do. I, and I'm partial to it. But if you're asking me from a practical point of speaking, practical terms, mandible claw is is great. And I know what you're thinking. Why don't you just bite down? You can't. The mandible claw, if done correctly, and you could actually do this and knock someone out. This is the truth. There's a bundle of nerves at the back of your tongue. And if you if you make enough, put enough pressure on that, you can legit knock someone out. That's the truth. It's legit. You know where the move came from? The move came from remember the old show, The Fugitive. The guy that was that was he actually they did actually did find him. He was not convicted of murdering his wife. Okay, I don't think he was. Don't get me wrong here. If I got the story wrong, my apologies. Uh, but I can't remember his name. Kimball, Richard Kimball, right? Uh, he became a pro wrestler later in life. This is a true story. He developed the mandible claw because he was a dentist. And he knew it was a practical move. And he, he knew that if you put enough pressure at the base of the tongue, at the back of the tongue, you could legit knock somebody out. So he started using it. And that's where the mandible claw came from. There's your education for day kids. Hope you enjoyed it. Magnum TA. Shane, you continue to be one of my favorite fans of all time. Magnum TA would have been in the talk for the GOAT. Thank you so much, my friend. I love me some MAGA TA. How did Nikita say it? MAGA TA. Love that dude. I still love Magnum. Great. He's freaking great, man. Ted Turner. I don't know if I'd call Ted Turner the best promoter. He wasn't a promoter. He was an owner. You know what I'm saying? It's splitting hairs, right? But no, Ted Turner was not in on the creative and all that stuff. He wasn't really making decisions. But I get where you're coming from. Killer Bees. There's a couple different people mentioning Killer Bees. Magnum TA, biggest flop. But Keith, not to anything he did wrong. It wasn't him. RJ says, greatest tag team the outsider. There's a hot take. Someone has someone has mentioned Kurt Angle, I'm pretty sure. Son and Jake DDT. Yeah, DDT's fantastic. But there again, everyone kicks out of the TD, DDT now. Miss Lopez says DX. You guys are good at this, man. I'm not lying. You guys have been hungry to talk some pro wrestling. Isn't it boring talking about today's stuff all the time? Come on, don't lie. This is the format moving forward. I hope you guys are on board with that. Yeah, DX, man. Great choice, great choice. NWA Red and Black, Wolfpack for life. Uh, did they the move is to have everyone do it and kick out? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. What's your name? Alan Hawk. Yes, sir. Sexy ladies, wrestlers, history. 
Sexy ladies wrestler. Ivory. Well, I'm not really going for that. I don't really look at sexy whatever. I just look at wrestlers, to be honest with you. Greatest of all time, my opinion, WWE during the 90s, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, best tag teams of all time, Heart Foundation, Powers of Pain. Oh, at Frey Birds, Mega Powers, Hogan and Savage, best, good Lord, best match of WWF, Brian, excuse me, Brain, Bobby Heenan, Jim Cornette, best women, uh, Moolah, Sable, Rock and Robin, Sensational Sherry, interesting. Uh, Dramatic Guitars, first theme, Broken Dreams, Lita's theme, and I've uh, been partial to Bruce Beefcake's theme, biggest tag team fall, the Bushwhackers. The Midnight Express, the Headbangers, the heavy, Heavenly Bodies. Heavenly Bodies was good for a while, man. It all depends on how they use. Diamond Cutter is cool. Yeah, I'll go with that. But it's basically the RKO. New Day. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, the New Day. And the Hearts, for sure. Best promos. Oh, my God. You guys are really bringing it today, man. Really, really bringing it. Best promo of all time is Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, CM Punk. Um. Mm. Best promo of all time. Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, CM Punk. Um, Paul Heyman. I know. I know what you're thinking. <gasps> Tom, you've lost your mind. Hey, man, this is all subjective, right? It's all in your opinion, isn't it? Uh, Joe, if they can start having friend, uh, fans, friends... Fans at live events, they would have to put a six feet distance in between. We'll see how that works. Roman being taker at Mania. Well, because they didn't do anything with it. Paul, that's what you're going for, right? Because they didn't do anything with it. Taker should have retired after that. Leave it alone. He just can't. Can't do it. Who was a Texas soul guy? I was a manager in WCW. That was uh, Colonel, Colonel Parker, right? Yeah, that was... Um, he was a wrestler beforehand. He was a wrestler beforehand. It was uh, Robert Fuller, right? He had a good gimmick. He had a really good gimmick. LOD Grass tag team ever. Well, Joe's pretty uh, pretty straightforward. I love Hawk and Animal, dude. Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov. Good tag team. <laughs> Shane says, nominate myself as the best wrestling mark. You might win that, dude. Finish your vertebraker just looks... Yeah, and there's a reason why vertebraker isn't used, and some companies won't even allow you to use it because it's dangerous, dude. I mean, you're putting all the pressure on the guy delivering the move, can I be honest with you? And the guy has to be good. And even if he is good, things could go wrong for sure. Skyscrapers. Which version? You're talking about uh, Callaway and Spivey? You're talking about Spivey and uh, Sid Vicious. Best move ever, Iron Claw. Well, Robbie, to your point, dude, it's like the Stone Cold Stunner. You could get on anybody at any time. And put him down. In fact, I'm watching Muda with the claw on uh, Jimmy Valiant right now. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, brother. Crossface. It's a good move. Yeah, for sure. Baron Von Raschke, Iron Claw. How about the Von Erics uh, Iron Claw? Jake Snake, DDP. Yep. Rick Rude was a great heel for sure. Fritz Von Eric, Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's see. Dusty Rose best promo. Yes, ma'am. I agree with you totally. The Piper Bomb. The Pipe Bomb. I saw you said Piper Bomb. Yeah, the Pipe Bomb. Great promo, dude. British Bulldogs, David Boyne. Yeah, we've had several people mention the Bulldogs. Yeah. There again, talking about some hot little Miss Sunny. Eh, again, I'm not really looking at sexy whatever, man. Hard Times best promo of all time. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it up there. I, I mean... I would say probably you're right about that. Hard times. Hard times, daddy. You put hard times on this country uh, when you took the American Dream Dusty Rhodes out of business. It's terrible. We all got a dusty impression. Most of them are awful. So, uh, Austin and Brian Pillman, Grace tag team. Well, it's one opinion, right? Breast promo guy in the game. Savage Flair. Dusty with polka dots. God Amati. Undertaker, anything he did with Yokozuna or Mankind in the 90s. House promos was... His promos were bar none. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. Pampiro Furpo. Wildest looking. I say the Wild Samoans are pretty pretty far up there. Greg Kabuki was pretty wild looking, right? Uh, Boogeyman's got to be up there, but his is all makeup, right? All paint and stuff. Miz has killer promos, Shannon says. Well, there's another hot take, right? John Cena, STFU, great fan. Really? You think so? Million Dollar Dream, best move. You can get it on anybody, right? It's good. 
Seen his greatest music? Right, that's interesting. Yeah, Luke, honestly, dude, this was the format of the show before I brought it to YouTube. Or, excuse me, brought it to Facebook. What, last year, the year before? Yeah, dude, this has always been the format of Tom Cross' main event. His, hence the name, the main event. The main event was, because I listen to a lot of shows that do the news of the day. There's a lot of shows that do that. I wanted to focus on one topic, which I'm going to try to revert to that format moving forward. <clears throat> Kane and Taker. Yep. Tom, who do you think was the best wrestler ever in a dad that could talk and really feel his character when they were interviewed? Dusty Rhodes. Hands down. And Ric Flair, close number two. Most dangerous move, the pile driver. Most dangerous, yeah, oh, for sure. Stu Hart, Miss Lopez, hey, hey. Corey says Owen Hart, yeah. Rick and Scott, we've had a few votes for the Steiners. Best show on Raw example, Piper's Pit Barbershop. Oh, best talk show segment, Piper's Pit. Yeah. Piper's Pit, best talk show segment. What about uh, um, Jericho's segment? What was it? Talk is Jericho? That's his podcast. What was the thing that he did? Someone tell me what Jericho's uh, talk show spot was. I can't remember. Yes, ma'am. I love Dusty as well, for sure. Big Boss Man. Hey. Superfly Snooker. Velveteen Dream, best all-rounder today. There's a hot take for you. Rock Cena Hollywood promo. Yep. Hello, Tammy, Kentucky. What's up? Thank you for hanging out today. Big Van Vader. Best big man of all time. Best big man of all time. Undertaker. Andre the Giant. Big Van Vader. Um, Andre, because he made a ton of money, right? Uh, who would be the other one? Big Show, maybe? Hmm. Word life. Warren Express. Uh, Kato and Tanaka. Yeah, yeah. Finn Balor intro. Best intro of all time. Well, yeah, today, sure, I guess. Who was the manager of WCW? He was a Texas old... Yeah, we talked about that, Ray. It was uh, Colonel Parker. Colonel Tom Parker. It was Robert Fuller. Tom Parker? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Colonel Robert Parker is Robert Fuller. Uh, Greatest heel turn, Hogan. It still remains one of the most shocking heel turns of all time. Uh, Barry Windham, when he turned on Lex Luger and joined the Horsemen, that's up there. Um, greatest heel turn of all time. Um, that was huge. Um, Seth Rollins on Reigns and Ambrose. That's a good one. Um, shocking, right? Didn't see it coming. Yeah. Yeah. Austin's not. I can't. I can't call Austin Seal turn grass of all time. It's freaking terrible. Best Japanese wrestler of all time. Mm. Woo. I still say Okada, if I'm being honest. But there were some great Japanese wrestlers before him. Um. God, I don't know, dude. That's a tough one. That's really tough. Uh, I had to think on that. Highlight reel. Thank you, Sandy. Miss TV. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for saying highlight reel. King Kong Bundy. There you go. Well, there you go. Diesel. Best of all. Biggest of all time. Well, so that's one take. Uh, let's see. Worst talk show. Shame. Brother Love. I love you. That was pretty awful. Big John Stud. James. Thank you for that one. Uh, Cena went out. Cena's not turning heel, brother. Forget it. HPK Barbershop Hill Turn. That's a great one, Ray. God, Ray, great callback, dude. Most exciting move, uh, Top Rope's Falcon Arrow. Top Rope. Hmm. I don't know. Top Rope. Ugh. I don't know. What's the thing Ricochet hits called the 620, I think? That's pretty spectacular. Death Defying. How much for Arn Anderson's shirt in the back? Uh, actually, that was a gift to me from a really, really good friend of mine. He had Arn autograph it for me. So yeah, that's what that's what's hanging behind me. I didn't pay for that, dude. I love that shirt. I've never worn it. Keith Lee, modern day big man, right? Yeah. He'll turn Michaels on Janetti. Yes, ma'am. The Islanders, Corey, great. Best mass wrestlers. This is fun stuff, yes. Best mass wrestlers. Hmm. Uh, the gentleman that passed away recently, legend, uh, wrestled a lot in Japan. 
The spoiler. The spoiler. Fantastic mask ending. Fantastic mask wrestler. Um, Rey Mysterio. You have to put him up there. Uh, for sure. Um, Kane, maybe. Would you put Kane in that category, perhaps? Um, I can't say uh, 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 Mascaris. It just can't. Uh, it just wasn't it wasn't much of a wrestler, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. He's a legend in Mexico. I get it. But, uh, eh, not much of a fan of that of that guy. Uh, Jushin Thunder Liger. Jushin Thunder Liger in the spoiler and Rey Mysterio. And, uh, ooh. Yeah, only a handful of others in my humble estimation. Mill Mascaris. Yeah, I'm not much on Mill. Mankind. Mankind. Well, that's a good one. Abyss. Ah. Uh, I like Abyss. I don't love Abyss. I like him a lot. I don't know. I think during his time he was good. I don't know if I would call him one of the greatest mass gimmicks of all time. That's just my opinion, though. That's just my take. JTL? Danny talking about JBL? Mass Superstar. Yeah. Hard for me to disagree with that. For sure. Hard for me to disagree with that. I met and got to hang out with Mass Superstar Number Two, a guy that he, uh, the original superstar, gave his gimmick to. Um, and we called him MS Two for short in the commentary. Big dude, George South trained him and brought him up in the business. I don't think he's even still working anymore, to be honest with you. Great dude, guy, really, really nice guy. The Patriot Danny says, got a couple different El Santo, Miss Lopez. Dang, Miss Lopez, thank you for that, El Santo. Great. Yeah, plenty of mass gimmicks in Mexico. We don't want to leave anybody out here, folks, for sure. Best top rope move, uh, Neville's Red Arrow. Yeah, you know, Sandy, I was thinking about that earlier, uh, and I couldn't remember uh, what it was called, but yeah, that's it, for sure. That's a great one, honestly. It really is. Um, I always thought Booker T's drop kick off top rope was a thing of beauty, if I'm being honest. Um, uh, Swanton Bomb, when it's done correctly, uh, it's good. It's really good. 450. I was part of the 450 as well. Terry Taylor. There's a name that hasn't been mentioned yet. Uh, Keith's talking about uh, El Generico. Talking about Sami Zayn. Is that who you mean? Blue Demon. Hard to argue against Blue Demon. Miss Lopez Tiger Mask for sure. For sure. Excellent. Greatest pop in wrestling. Paul. You're my man, Paul. You hear me? Okay. So, I'm going to give you mine real quick because I got some, okay? Best pop in wrestling, in my humble opinion, you'll have to go back and watch it, was the night that Nikita joined Dusty in the cage that became the superpowers. It was against J.J. Dillon and Ole Anderson. To this day, it remains the biggest pop I think I've ever heard. Um, I'm just being honest. Um, Triple H's return that year, and I forget what show it was on. Was it Raw? I forget where it was, but he came back that night. Uh, the night that Austin returned and fought uh, Eric Bischoff in a match, that was massive. Um, CM Punk in Chicago when he won Money in the Bank against Cena. That was huge. Um, yeah, man. Huge pops, dude. Huge, huge stuff. Every single time the Rock and Roll Express came out in Jim Crockett promotions. Right? It's kind of like I see it. Yeah. All good stuff. This is great stuff, man. I love going down memory lane, dude. It's cool stuff. Psychosis. Great callback, Danny. Kick out the top. Funny wrestlers? Someone's asking about funny wrestlers. My favorite finishers are super kick and spear. Yeah. The well, spear if it's done right. Uh, yeah, but people kick out of the spear now too. Blue Blazer Owen. Owen Hart, yeah, for sure. Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein didn't last long. I mean, still guys do it now, but Rick's not doing it. Or Scott. Scott hadn't done it in a long time, right? Uh, let's see. Madison Square Garden. Oh, we're talking about best uh, arenas of all time? Madison Square Garden had to be up there. Greensburg Coliseum has to be up there. Um, I'm old school, so I'll say Charlotte Coliseum has to be up there. That's just me. you know. Um, what's the one in St. Louis? Uh, you have to say the Omni in Atlanta. Has to be. Right? There again, I'm an NWA guy, dude. Hardy Boys come back at WrestleMania, Miss Lopez says. Fantastic. Uh, let's see. Yeah, a lot of people mentioned Rick Rude, man. Awesome with the beer truck pop. Yeah, that was good. So let me tell you a story. So, um, there was the night that it was on SmackDown when Austin was still out from his neck surgery. Remember this? And the uh, corporation was in the ring and Rock was on the uh, stage. 
And he said, uh, you know, there's someone that's going to have an issue with this. It's this guy. And it goes up on the screen. It's Austin and the crane. You guys remember this? And Austin's like, remember the look? I'm going to tell you something, son. And he starts this thing. And then he blows up the DX bus. Here's what you don't know. SmackDown was not live at that time. SmackDown was still taped. Okay? So what happened was they were in, he was in the crane. He was working the controls. They let him really do it, too. Uh, and the, the, the block came down. And on top of the bus, it's a true story, it went... Like that. And you're like, oh. So they lifted it back up and they did it like three times and it went, right? And so we're in the crowd going, oh. We all did it. Oh. And then when it hit, we went, and we went, oh. Right? So people are going, come on, man. Then it stopped showing Austin. They stopped showing Austin in the cockpit of the thing. They took him out. Because evidently it was like, get out of there. Let me do it. So they got the other dude in there. They're worth the controls. This time it came down a, a much harder. Boom. Explosion. Let me get this straight. Was the fuel tank of that great big RV or uh, in the in the top of the thing? Okay. It's wrestling. It's whatever. Okay. So then the show goes off the air like that. The bus is in flames. And meanwhile, everyone in, in the corporation is in the ring going like, the whole time, they're just standing there going, what do we do? Just stand here. They had to keep selling it. And I'm like, what do you guys could have ran to the parking lot by now and stopped him? There's like 12 of you. I don't know what it was. So anyway, that was fun. And then, uh, of course, they edited the whole thing together when they saw it live, so it happened on the first drop. Part two of this story is, after the drop happened, the show went off the air, uh, it wasn't over. People started leaving, and there was like six of us in the line. We, we all sat together. We all went together. We are all friends. I said, nobody leave. And they're like, what? And I said, he's coming out here. They're like, what? And I said, there's no way Austin's in that parking lot right now. They're not going to let him come out here. Well, sure enough, the glass broke. Dun, 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 dun. And guess what happened? Everybody that had went up the aisle started racing back down the aisle to get back to their seats so they could watch. That was a huge pop. Ne- never made it on TV. Uh, so he comes out. Chubby. Austin had gained weight, dude. He'd be on the shelf for a while. Couldn't work out or anything. Right at that neck. He came in the ring. He dropped Shane three times with three different stunners. Shane, they sent Shane out to sneak up on him. Austin went, yeah, bam, dropped him. Helped him back up. Gave him a beer. And Shane said, okay, okay. Drank the beer. Dropped him again. Helped him up like twice. Dropped him three times total. And then like flipped everybody off and then left. It was very freaking cool. But there again, I don't think they ever showed that. I don't think it ever made the TV. Anyway, there's your SmackDown story for the day. Pretty cool, right? Edge's return. Good one. Someone mentioned beer money. Great stuff. Um, The Rock against... uh, (laughs) Return against Rusev. That's interesting. Bad News Brown. There's a blast from the past. Ric Flair uh, first... Night and what? Mark, I miss you, brother. Whatever you said. Matt, my, Matt Rye was the best masked wrestler. Well, well, yeah, because it was Dusty Rhodes, right? Folks, we've gone over an hour. I don't know how much of an audience we had. We haven't been here in a couple of weeks, so I guess folks weren't paying attention to us today. We didn't announce the show was coming back today. I guess that's what it is. Um, folks, we could do this all day long. Uh, honestly, I definitely could. But uh, listen, we're going to go ahead and take it home. I want to thank everybody out there for watching. I want to thank you guys for supporting. For everybody that sent me messages in the past two weeks, thank you very much. I apologize if I didn't answer you. I'm very sorry. I've had a lot going on in this thing we call life, as Prince said. Um, but anyway, I want you guys to know I do appreciate you. Hope you've had fun today. We're going to continue doing the main event. Uh, I'm trying to re- I'm trying to get back to what made this show fun to begin with, and this is what made it fun is... Going back down memory road and thinking about stuff. We're going to we're gonna have to do something big to top this one for next week, man, for sure. So maybe next week we'll pick a match or we'll pick a show. How about we pick a show for next week and we'll talk about it. Or we'll pick we'll say the best uh, pay-per-view or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right, man. So listen, thanks everybody again for watching. We're going to get out of here. We're going to take this thing home. Uh, we do appreciate everybody. Please remember to follow us on Patreon. Check out the website. Um, a Facebook page, Tom Clark's main event. Thanks as always. Please remember to check out Wrestling Rumors. Great freaking pro wrestling content for you guys there all the time, every day. Please tune in and check it out and give it a read. Everybody there would be much appreciated, including myself. So uh, remember to follow High Velocity Wrestling on Facebook. That's yours truly. Um, Part of that wrestling promotion. Love what I do. It's great, fun stuff. Please check it out. That's all I got for you, man. We're going to get out of here. Take care of yourselves. Stay home. Stay safe. We'll see you next time on Tom Clark's main event.